auto detailing business tips. If you have followed my channel for any length of time, you know that I preach that when it comes to operating a successful and more importantly, a profitable auto detailing business, it is 60% of things that are what I call the intangibles of the industry. For example, welcome to the world of University of YouTube. You can learn how to do virtually anything. Now with detailing, you can learn all the tricks and tips. Now there's secrets. I mean, I've got my own tweaks of anything, any part of the process, I've got my own personal tweaks. Okay, you may not be able to learn that, but I guarantee that you could learn 80%, and not to confuse you with numbers, but you can learn 80% of what you need to know of the physical world of detailing for free on YouTube. How to shampoo a seat, how to wax a car, how to polish a car, all those things are what I call the tangibles, the hands-on products, tools, techniques. But operating a business, a successful and profitable business is about the intangibles. I'm of the opinion, if I was to reduce it down to a number and quantify it for you, it would be 60%, more than half, of the business is the intangibles. So on the way home today, which is why I have this wet auto fetish shirt, it is here in California at least, and I know all you on the East Coast are gonna be like, oh wow, Darren, cry me a river. Because right now it's probably, I don't know, let's say 50% humidity. I've got my daughter behind the camera, so you'll notice that I keep, I will occasionally glance up at her. She was actually out working with me. She currently is my employee, um, which she bounces in and out based on her schedule. So the humidity is horrid. It's like 50% um, and it's only 83 degrees, but it feels like it's about 103. So I am drenched. You would think I just came out of the gym. So on the way home, I was thinking yet again about business, which constantly is on my mind, of course and being an independent businessman is vastly different than working for someone else. Yes, you may go home if you work for someone else and stress about your job and the things you gotta do to perform for your boss or whatever. Owning your own business, yes, you will wear endless hats. You have to juggle everything. Something that came across my mind, now if to transition, I'm gonna add a little sidebar, so add a little context for the moment which is this, if you were to be part of my circle of influence, family, friends, I am what's known as a control freak. Now, whether I'm truly a freak or not is subjective. Yes, I love control, I love order, I love organization. So I tend to overthink things for most people. That makes me a very good detailer because if I overthink my own world, when I apply it to the world of detailing, I know 99.9999% of the time, I'm gonna nail it for a customer that is not hyper-focused on the details, the details of life, never mind the details of their car. What does this have to do at the moment? Well, if I'm a control freak, my kids and my wife are constantly getting on my case. It's like, Dad, you need to let someone else do that for you. Valid point. But in dissecting that moment, that facet of my life, I think, you know what really bothers me? Or one of the elements of that, of why I don't outsource more of my life, is because I know that someone, I could hire an expert to come out for, for example, trim my trees, or fix the, like change out the uh, outlet uh, coming out of the wall for my toilet, where you've got the shutoff valve. I don't like the screw on kind because they eventually leak. So I want the kind that are just a, uh, I don't even know what the official term is. I can do it myself or I can hire a plumber to do it. But you know what inevitably happens is they always leave a mess, some kind of mess that I will have to come back in and clean up after them. It might be small, it might be large, but I know there's always going to be something. And that's my lesson for you as a detailer. When you show up to a customer's house, you need to be aware. I've also said that detailing is 
like the ultimate in awareness. And I don't mean self-awareness necessarily, because that is different. Self-aware is different than being aware of your surroundings. Most people think that they're automatic, that if you have awareness, because I guarantee if you lined up a thousand people, 999 of them would say, oh yeah, I'm so aware, I watch the public, I see what they do, I see all the idiots, fill in the blank. That does not mean they are self-aware, as in they have the ability to observe themselves, and that's where, I don't know, that's a whole different subject. Point is, is you need to be aware. So when you're on the job and you specifically leave that job, are you leaving a mess? And it can be things as subtle as if you used uh, an, extent, an extension cord of theirs. Did you use an outlet in their garage? Because most of you know that I do not carry my own water and power. I have access to a generator, but I only use it if I'm forced to. Most of the time I'm working at homes some of the times at businesses, but I like to use their water and their power. So let's say I'm at a garage, a homeowner's garage, and I have to unplug something in order to plug my cord in. Do I remember to plug their cord back in? Now, some of you may be thinking like, are you serious, Darren? You think about that kind of stuff? Well, yeah, I do. You know why? Because I don't want to give my customer any excuse at all to be annoyed by me and my services. Zero excuse. So it's one thing to nail the details on their car, vastly different than to uh, deliver an experience where there's zero, and I mean zero, frustration from my customer. Because every person is different. Now I'm very hyper aware. See right there, I just label myself as hyper aware. Who knows if I'm truly that aware of my surroundings or not. That once again is subjective. But for the most part, I've been able to verify it and those around me will confirm, yes, dad or Darren or honey is hyper aware. The dude overthinks things and he's too aware. Okay, well, you apply that to the world of detailing. So let's say you've made a mess, for example, most of you know that I do a lot of debadging of cars and trucks. When I'm using that 3M eraser tool, and by the way, if you have, if you have uh, maintained focus, at the very end of this video, I've got a few notes that I wanna add, um, a, a call out specifically. Anyhow, so when I'm using the 3M eraser tool, I will make a mess by shaving off the double-sided tape, and it will leave a mess on the driveway. Now, two things have and can happen. A, I can clean up that mess completely before I leave. So Johnny Customer does not have to deal with it. That is a good thing. I do not want Johnny Customer to have to deal with it because if I pull away and I leave that mess on the driveway, chances are Johnny Customer is gonna be a little irritated. Once again, I, don't, I want to leave no excuse for disappointment. B, Johnny customer may actually take it upon himself to come out there because often people like to come out and observe, ask questions, whatever. So they will grab a broom and start to fastidiously clean up my mess. So I tell them, it's like, hey, you know what? This is my mess. You're paying me as a professional to do this job. That includes cleaning up my mess. So I inform them leave that alone, I will take care of it because I want to take care of it. I don't want them to have to lift a finger. I want, it, I want the experience to not only be pleasant, and by pleasant I mean no frustrations or no aggravations or no disappointments. I want to deliver on their expectations, if not exceed their expectations. So I want the experience. It really is about the details. Often it's the intangibles cleaning up after yourself a hundred percent and even going as far as leaving it better than when you found it. And you may think, how is that possible? See how many times my phone just rang, which I know is a good problem. So yeah, once again, yeah, cry me a river Darren, which is why I cannot answer my phone. Many reasons why. So if for all you scouters out there, um, and I'm gonna reference Russ Welch, who is hardcore scouting, so go scouts. Yes, I grew up in the scouting world. And one of their rules, and I don't remember the exact label for it, but it's you leave it as though you were never there. 
I actually take it a step further when it comes to customers' homes. Is there a way I can leave it better? Now, you may think, well, what are you going to do? Go out there and sweep the street? Maybe. Maybe you could blow it with the blower. For example, what if you use their hose or their extension cord and their hose was a big rat's nest of whatever because they don't know how to coil it up. So often I will actually coil their hose better than when I found it if I had to use their hose. So there is subtle ways if you, and it's really this trick, it's like the golden rule, which I'm pretty certain I learned in like second grade. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And if you want to go biblical, you can, because it's taught there also. And it doesn't matter, matter if you're Christian or not. There's a lot of lessons you can learn in the Bible. So pretend you're the customer. Their money, their time, their car, their house, their neighbors. Are you out in the street blaring your music and annoying the neighbors? And now when you leave, their neighbor comes over to them and, and says, like, hey, your detailers, they're annoying. So Think about it. This is where awareness comes in. So that's my lesson for you today is have that awareness. The world of a successful detailing business or any business for that matter is at least to me 60% of intangibles. This is why I'm trying to teach you guys those intangibles stuff that you may not be able to learn on some of the other detailing YouTube channels. Welcome to my unique value proposition. I'm going to teach you stuff that you're not going to learn on other channels that is far more than the tangibles of how to polish a car, how to shampoo a seat, whatever. So now a little sidebar. If you haven't subscribed, why the hell not? Hover over the subscribe button. Also, I want to hear from you guys specific examples because I know that uh, a big majority of you uh, up and coming detailers and I hear from so many of you which is very cool I want to hear specifically some examples that you have done at your customers homes or business to make the moment even better that exceeds more than just a great detail job that added value is what it's called in the business world added value how do you add value to the moment that exceeds the standard engagement of business, meaning they hire you to detail the car, that's their expectations. How do you go above and beyond to add value to the moment? So I want specific examples. It could be a single sentence, it can be a paragraph, whatever. And just know for the first week or two, that's when I do most of my responding to videos. Second, I wanna do a shout out. So hopefully you have tuned in. So there's a guy named Joe and I'm not to pull up my phone, and he's of JP Detailing. JP Details is his YouTube channel, and I just have it pulled up right here, um, videos. He is a bloke in uh, Britain, so uh, head on over to JP Details, check out his comment, and make sure you subscribe to him. And if you don't like, honestly, I haven't had time to check him out. I just like to do guys favors. I like to pay it forward whenever I can. He's a fellow detailer. He's busting his butt. I mean, anyone that's made videos knows it's way more work than you guys in audience land think. I know a lot of you think like, oh, wow, that's cool, man. Make some videos, you get paid for it. It's like, yeah, I make some money on these videos, but the ROI, the amount of time and effort it goes just to sit in front of this camera, and I can see the counter. I'm at 14 minutes and 35 seconds right now. Never mind, I'm going to pay my daughter now to download it, which can take so much time, even though I've got the latest and greatest iMac. So that's probably like four grand worth of hardware. So speed is not an issue. I've got the highest speed of Wi-Fi I can get. It's business, even though it's at my house. So it still takes a colossal amount of time. So this guy, he's detailing, plus he's doing videos. So Cruise on over to his YouTube page, JP Details. He's in Britain. It just says the UK. Sorry, JP. I didn't have time to do my due diligence. It says he's at about 10,000 subs right now. And I know at the beginning, as a YouTuber, you get fixated on numbers. Uh, my One of my sons specifically, actually I have two sons that have YouTube channels. The one son has become hyper-focused on numbers. I get it. So that's my little shout out. Also. 
below every video, there's going to be links to my website. That actually gets even more comprehensive than these videos. So check out the links. That's hypothetically, if you wanted to support my cause and pay it back, that's how you would do it. You would use the links at my website. Virtually 99% of those links will open up a new window into Amazon. When you shop through there, so this is me basically promoting my ability to make money on the side, but it's also me being very transparent with you because I want you to know that yes, I in fact make money doing that. Once again, we could argue that ROI all day long, but that's how you could if you hypothetically wanted to support my cause. You use the links under the show more box. So there's always going to be links. And for all you guys that want to pick Darren's brain, you'd be amazed at how much you can learn just by visiting my service or my detailing services page, autofetishdetail.com. If you read that as though you were a customer, you'd be amazed at how much you could learn and answer the questions that many of you reach out and ask of me. So that's a way I can, once again, try to help you guys uh, because there's no way I could take every one of your calls. I will leave it at that. And until next time.